Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one only true name is Yahweh Shai. Bahashim, meaning coming in the name, Ba means coming in, Ha means the, Sha means name, Raka meaning spirit, Kodash meaning holy. Double honors to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone, who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect, and shalom to you sincere uh, brothers out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity, and shalom to you sincere sisters that's listening to silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Razaka, and pretty much we're going to go into Revelations, the 13th chapter. And Lord willingness lessons edifying. This is Revelation 13 and 1. And it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, which represents Esau's power structure. Okay. And I got a precept. Revelation 17. And we're going to read verse 3. It says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-covered beast. And who's that woman that sits upon a scarlet scarlet beast? That's talking about the NATO, okay, which is the EU, okay, known as the EEC, which is the European Economic Community, funded, I believe, in 1949, which is now the EU, the European Union, which is now known as the NATO, okay, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, okay, and then it says, that's that uh, scarlet covered beast, which is the modern day Roman Empire, that's who the woman that sat upon a scarlet covered beast, that's talking about the NATO, which is the modern day Roman Empire, which is the Roman Empire today, it says, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, now the seven heads, that's representing the seven uh, Edomite rulerships, which is the Greeks, the British, Germania Minor, the Spanish, the French, the Romans, Germania Major. Those are the seven heads, which are the seven rulerships. You had the ten horns, which is France, West Germany, Belgium, uh, Italy, uh, was that uh, Netherlands, Luxembourg, uh, Denmark, Greece, Ireland, and England. Those are the ten horns. Okay? So... That's what that's talking about. It's talking about Esau's power structure. Let's go back to it. Revelations 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten, ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. So that's talking about, that's representing Esau's power structure. Okay. That's what that's representing. Verse 2, and it says, in verse 2, it says, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, which is the start of, you know, which the start of it was Greece. Okay, that was the start of the kingdom. Okay, and it says, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, which the bear represents Russia. Okay, and it says, and the dragon, it says, so like it says, it says, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. All right, the mouth of the lion, that's talking about... Great Britain. That's what that's talking about there. And it says, and the dragon gave him his power. And that dragon is EU and NATO. All right. That's Esau's power structure. Okay. It says, and the dragon gave him his power and his, and his seat and great authority. Okay. So that's Esau's power structure. Okay. That's what that's talking about there. This is verse three. It says, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, okay, and it says, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast, so that deadly, that deadly wound was, uh, Rome being taken down, you know, according to, uh, Revelations, the 20th chapter, so he couldn't deceive the world anymore, his deadly wound was healed, which is that, uh, European Union, which was that treaty, all right, the Treaty of Rome, which was, you know, brought back, uh, together okay so that's that um that deadly wounded was healed was that treaty 
okay and that wound you know was healed it going back to the 1957 treaty of rome okay so that was that that wound, that deadly wounded that was that was uh healed it says and all the world wounded after the beast okay so that's what that was that's going to the treaty of rome okay in 1957 and this is verse uh four revelation 13 and 4 it says and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast saying who is this like unto the beast who is able to make war with them so who was able to make war with the eu and nato and all these other countries the edomite rulerships did okay they were the ones that was able to do that okay they were the ones that did that. The ruler, the, the Edomite rulerships. This is verse 5. And it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Verse 6. And it says, And it says, uh, And he opened his mouth. He says, and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Okay, and that's this devil. All right. And how was he able to do that? By setting up all these laws that are contrary to the scriptures. Okay, that's how he was able to do that. Verse 7. And it says, and it came to pass, it says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints Okay, the saints were the Israelites. It says, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So he overcame us. The Lord, you know, gave him that power to do that. Okay, he overcame us. The Lord gave him that power to do that. Okay, verse 8. And it says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth verse 9 and it says if any man have an ear let him hear verse 10 it says he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints so everything that happened unto us is going to happen unto them double okay and we're going to prove that in revelations 18 and for start at verse 5 okay because Esau believes that, you know, all the wickedness that he has done to the Israelites, he sweeped it under the rug that he's good and he's safe and he's not. Revelations 18 and 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven. And it says, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. So the Lord hasn't forgotten them. See, Esau tried to sweep it under the rug and make it seem good, but the Lord hasn't forgotten it. This is why double is going to be onto her. Okay. Which is this whore, which is America, which is Esau, Edom. Right. This is Revelation 18 and 6. Revelation 18 and 6, it says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works in the cup which she have fulfilled to her double. So all the pain, all the sorrow, all the destruction is going to be double onto her. It's going to be double onto this whore. Okay? It's going to be double onto, onto them. Okay? It's going to be double. This is Revelations 13 and 11. Revelations 13 and 11, right? And it says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Okay. And it says, and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon, which is Esau's power structure. You know, those two horns represents his demise. All right. Which you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans. Okay. So those two horns, it, it pretty much represents his demise, which you have the, the Democrats and the, and the Republicans. Okay. So that's what that's referring into right there. This is verse 12. And it says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth in them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose daily wound was healed. Because what did Rome have? Rome had the the the, the Patrican, the Patrians, the Patrians and the Pebli and the Peblians. If I'm saying that the Peblians. Okay. You know, this is, you know, the Roman system all over again. You know, so that's talking about the Roman society, the Roman system that America follows today, because you still have that. You know, you have the poor, the rich, you have the poor, the middle class. Uh, you have no, you have the rich, the poor, you have the rich, the middle class, and then you had a poor. Right. And the publicans are people, the ones, the, the, the publians, if I'm saying right, the publians are the people that really didn't have much. OK, 
but you had the you had the uh the 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 patrons the patrons if I'm saying it right which were pretty much the wealthy in other words okay so that's what that's going into there in verse 12 okay because America is the revival of the Roman Empire which it attributes of the ancient Roman Empire it still follows the same system okay because it's the same empire okay you have the ancient Roman Empire and you have the revival of the Roman Empire okay so America follows that same system okay this is Revelations 13 and 13 Revelations 13 and 13 and it says and he doeth great wonders it says he doeth great wonders so that it says so like it says and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and that's talking about his technology okay his blessing the blessing of the sword dropping bombs you know dropping bombs on all these different cities i mean countries you know dropping bombs on these all these different uh, countries so that's you know that's that fire that come down from heaven okay that's his blessing which was that sword which we're going to get real quick in genesis because that's what esau's blessing is is that sword genesis 27 and we're going to start at verse uh, 38 and it says and esau said unto his father esau is a so-called white man okay you guys come from the line of esau you guys are the biblical edomites you so-called white people Verse 38, it says, And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me even, it says, Bless me even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Okay, it says, verse 39, And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. And that was his blessing. His blessing was the fatness of the earth, and the blessing was his sword. Okay, that was his blessing. It says, And of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40, and by thy sword thou shalt live. So his blessing was the fat to inherit the fatness of the earth and his weaponry. That was Esau's blessing. Okay. He, he achieved inheritance of the fatness of the earth. That was his blessing and his weapon. That's his blessing, which is that sword. Okay. It says, and by thy sword shall I live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shall have the, the dominion that thou shall break the yoke from off of thy neck, right? Because Esau is on the loose right now, okay? But it's going to come to a time where the Lord is going to have it that Esau is going to serve his brother, okay? Esau is going to go into slavery, which we read in uh, Revelations 13 and 10, right? He that leadeth thee to captivity shall go into captivity. But right now, Esau has broken the yoke off his neck because he's not in servitude to us. He's on the loose right now. But his, but his judgment, his reward is going to be to be a slave to the Israelites, okay? It says, verse... I'll stop right there. But I read from the top, verse 40. It says, And by thy sword shall I live, and thou shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Okay? And this is Esau's blessing the sword and the fatness of the earth. Okay? That was his blessing. Which we can also get Revelations 6 and 4 to prove that his blessing is the sword. Revelations 6 and 4. And there went out a horse that was red. That red horse is representing Esau Edom. Okay, Esau Edom is that red horse. All right, the so-called white man. He's that red horse. That's talking about Esau. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And how did Esau take peace from the earth? His sword. Okay, it says, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So that's his blessing. Going back to Revelations 13. I don't want to keep this long. Let's read it again. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And there you go. That's talking about his technology, his blessing of the sword. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Esau's blessing. Okay, that's how he's able to, to do that. To have fire come down from heaven. Because that's talking about his, his, his blessing, his sword, his technology. Okay, verse 14. And it says, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the womb by a sword and did live. So what's that image? That's his way of life. Okay, that's that image. Okay, this is this is uh, this American way. Okay, that they try to portray. You know, they have all these other nations drunken off of. 
okay? They drunken off the philosophies, etc. Okay? And that's this that's this way, all right? This American way which is pushing his image, which his image is the system. Okay? His the beast system. That's that image. That's his way of life, this image, okay, which is his system, which we're going to read right now, Revelation 15, 13, 15, and he had power to give life onto the image of the beast, and the image is his system, his beast system, okay, that's that image there, the image is his system, it says that the image of the beast, the beast is talking about the NATO, that's that beast, okay, and that image is his beast system, his system, because right now we're on fiat currency, when you have the hundred, you had the dollar bills, the two dollar bills, the five dollar bills, the twenty dollar bills, right? The fifty dollar bills, the hundreds, nickels, dimes, pennies. We all using fiat currency right now, but they're going to get rid of the fiat currency and they're going to come in with a whole new system, which they're pushing right now, which is the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, which everything is going to be digital. And what's going to come out once they make it, once they establish that CBDC as the new currency, it's going to be that C hit, which is this right here. And you're going to be acquired to take this. Now, they're not going to force you to take this, but this is going to be the new currency, meaning to make it in this society, you're going to have to have this. And if you are so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American Indian, and you take this here, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking this here. This is the hour of temptation, which is going to be global across the world. Okay, you don't want to take this. People say, I don't believe in it, regardless if you believe in this or not. If you are a so-called Negro, Spank, Native American, and you take that, you're going to be destroyed. That's that beast system there. Okay, that's what it's talking about here. And that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So if you don't confirm to this American way, all right, you're going you're gonna to be killed because it's going to be mandatory. Not everybody's going to take this, though. Everybody, a lot of people, everyone knows what this is. Not everybody's going to take this. You're going to have those that's going to be beheaded. They're going to die because they're not going to take this here. They know what this is. This is against the Lord. This right here is against the Lord. You take this here, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking it, man. Okay. Verse 16. And it says, and he calls it all. Who's the he? The central bankers, the high power elites. Right. And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor. So the richest man on earth to the poorest man homeless on the street is going to be acquired to take it. OK, there's not they're not going to force you, but it's going to be acquired. And if you don't take it, you're going to be beheaded. You're going to be put to death. But if you take it, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to feel the wrath of the Lord. OK, so you don't want to take it. It says to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now, when you go into the interliner, that word mark, it goes into G5480, okay, which is Karagma, a stamp or imprinted mark. You go into the entomology of Karagma, it goes into G5482, which is Kadox, a pell stake or palisade. You go into entomology of Kadox, it goes to G G1125, which is Grafo. Okay, so we just, I just want to break it down off the top of the head, but we're just going to get it right here. See, G5480. Strong G, 5480, Haragma, Haragma. So this is a physical thing, by the way, because you got people, they'll read uh, Revelations 13, 15 and read down to verse 16 and say that this is talking about a spiritual. No, this is something physical here. It says a stamp, a, a printed, an imprinted mark, a stamp or imprinted mark. This is something physical, right? When you go to G, 5482, Kadox. Right, a pell or stake or palisade. The palisade there is talking about the needle that they use to insert this at the top into you. So if you take this here, this MLT, this MLTB, you're gonna be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking this. So that's what that's going into. It's talking about the palisade, which that palisade is talking about that right there, that needle that you see. That's what it's talking about. If you take it, you will be destroyed. Right. You go into the entomology of G5482, it goes into Karax. I mean, it goes into Grafo. G1125, so like it goes into Grafo, right? It says to delineate or form letters on a tablet, parchment, paper, or other material. So this is physical. This is physical here. And this is what it is. That's what the MLTB is. That's what that M-A-R-K is. It's talking about this right here. And if you take this, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking this. There's no repentance for taking that. Regardless, 
If you are a so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American Indian, and you don't believe in the M-A-R-K, you take it, regardless you believe it or not, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance for it. Get back to it, because I don't want to make this long. Revelation 17, right? So that's talking about the MOTB in verse 16. Verse 17 is as well. It says that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay. Verse 18. And it says here is here. It says here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred and three score six. So today is, you know, so today is the modern day revised Roman Empire. Okay. That's. Who the uh because we this is the iron and clay, right? The iron and clay, that's the divided kingdoms, which is the revival of the Roman Empire. Okay, this is the revival of the Roman Empire. And when you go into 603 score six, it goes into high size stigma, which we're gonna prove that this is talking about this right here. That's what this is talking about. When you read down from verse 15 all the way down to 18, it's talking about this right here. That whole entire breakdown from 15 all the way down to 18, it's talking about this right here. This is a physical thing, not spiritual. Now, there is a spiritual one. There is a spiritual M-A-R-K, which that goes to Ezekiel 9 and 4, which is that the Ra, right? And also that goes into uh, Revelation 14 and 1, right? And it also goes into that Revelation 7. So, yes, there is a spiritual M-A-R-K, but Revelation 13 and 15 is not talking about that spiritual. I mean, that's not talking about yet. It's talking about that spiritual uh, M-A-R-K. That's talking about a physical uh, thing. A physical M-A-R-K. And if you take it, you will be destroyed. Now, when you go into 603 source 6, it goes into G5516, which goes into high size stigma, right? Strong's G5516. High Xi stigma. High Xi stigma. And when you go into high size stigma, go into the entomology of high size stigma, it goes into G4742, which is stigma, right? Strong's G4742, stigma, stigma. It says a mark pricked in or branded upon the body. So this is a physical thing here. This is physical, right? It says... Or branded upon the body to ancient oriental usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name or the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belonged to and that there were even some devotes who stamped themselves in his in this way with the token of their gods. So this is a physical thing and this is what it's talking about. And if you are an individual out there, you don't believe in the MOTB, you take this here, regardless if you believe in this or not, you will be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking that. This is a physical thing. So, hey, going back, we're going to end it there with that. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Yahweh Kakudash. Double honors to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers that are scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to you, sincere sisters that's listening in silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Razakah. And uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. And on to the next one. Shalom.